Lifestyle medicine is the use of therapeutic lifestyle changes in the treatment of disease. Lifestyle medicine is the ideal treatment of choice for preventing, managing and even reversing certain diseases and conditions. So instead of using medications and surgeries and, and more complicated approaches, we use simple things like food, like exercise, like sleep and those uh, approaches can not only prevent disease but they can actually treat the disease processes that our patients work with. Lifestyle medicine is simply making sensible, simple changes in what we eat, do, and think. Lifestyle medicine methods have the power and potential to turn the epidemic of chronic disease around. Chronic disease is the major problem in the Western world today. About 70% of all chronic diseases are lifestyle based and lifestyle medicine is designed to deal with those, to help people change their behaviours, to change the environment in which they live and to contribute to the medical system to enable them to perform better over the long term. Good afternoon, Dr. Sal, Medical Director for the Lifestyle Medicine Institute and for the CHIP program. I just wanted to um, say a few words about uh, lifestyle medicine today. On the last visit, uh, we talked about module one, which was basically the foundations of CHIP. And today we're going to get into module two and talk about the importance of lifestyle medicine or lifestyle management. I actually don't even like the word medicine because really it's almost the antithesis of what we think about when we talk about lifestyle. It's really not about medicine per se, it's about healthcare and it's about behaviors and things that you can do to stay healthy. Um, on the last visit, we also discussed the immune system. With the pandemic that we've been dealing with, with this coronavirus pandemic, so many people have been asking questions, how do I keep my immune system healthy? How do I boost my immune system? How do I stay healthy so that I can deal with the next pandemic that comes around? And it really is one of the most important questions that we can deal with. Before I go on any further, um, I just want to uh, uh, remind everyone that's on the line to add in questions. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box. You can see below that there is a little box that you can put some questions into, and I'll answer the questions at the end of the monologue, if you will. So just put in your questions and we'll get to that for sure. So I wanna really talk about the economics and the science of lifestyle healthcare, if you will. And it's really interesting when you look at the economics, 86% of the healthcare spending, the dollars that go into healthcare, go into treating chronic diseases. And chronic diseases are such things as heart disease and high blood pressure and diabetes and osteoarthritis and cancers, et cetera. And it's really interesting. And I want you to think about this question. What do people actually die from? In this country and in most developed countries, people die from what is listed on the death certificate, if you will, as a heart attack, as heart disease, as cancer, so on and so forth. But what people actually die from, think about this, poor nutrition, lack of physical activity, not enough sleep, too much stress, tobacco use, recreational drug use, unhealthy habits. So the answer to the question really uh, that what do people die from, people actually die from unhealthy lifestyle behaviors. Because if you look at all of the chronic illnesses, they're all foundationally related to lifestyle behaviors. So when we get back to, and we mentioned this uh, on the last uh, session that we did, the healthcare system that we have today is actually a sick care system. People get sick, we try to make them well, oftentimes that doesn't happen. We can sometimes reverse the disease or just slow the progression of the disease. But we don't really deliver health care. What we deliver is sick care. So what I think we're all involved in, for, for the people that are, that are on the line participating today, you may be a CHIP facilitator, you may be a dietitian, you may be a health coach, you may be someone that's in the CHIP program currently or having been a graduate. What we're all involved in is changing the paradigm of health care from the sick care system to a true health care system. And one of the benefits of the CHIP program, the Complete Health Improvement Program, is the fact that it is foundational 
to what we're looking at as far as this paradigm shift. You know, food is the foundation for healthy living. There's really nothing more important and nothing that we do on such a regular basis that really impacts health so directly. So we, we discussed on the last, um, on the last session what um, systemic inflammation was all about. And we're gonna put up a, a slide that I wanna go through. I'll show you here, but it'll come up on the screen in a minute. And it says the relationship of lifestyle risk factors and cardiovascular disease. So if we start at the top and you look at the top of that, uh, that um, slide, it says incapacitation or death. So what most people, what's listed as the cause of death or incapacitation for most people in the United States and in so many other uh, westernized worlds, westernized countries, coronary disease or heart disease, irregular heart rhythms, cardiac arrhythmias, heart failure, stroke, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease. Then you go down that, that slide, symptoms of disability, subclinical vascular disease, and this is the important point, uh, point. Subclinical vascular disease basically means inflammation that's developing on the inside of your arteries. When that happens, when you develop inflammation on the inside of your arteries, your body is inflamed. It's starting to develop hardening of the arteries, if you will. That's the, the uh, term that's often used. But what happens here is you start to develop poor blood flow to different organs of your body. And that's when things show up. What's listed below that is all the risk factors that go into this subclinical vascular disease or inflammation, including high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, which we know is absolutely a pandemic today. The inflammatory pathway go, is involved in all of that, thrombus formation or clot formation, and the risk of irregular heart rhythms. You continue to go down, and the last uh, block of, of uh, letters there, lifestyle risk factors, poor dietary habits, physical activity, problems with sleep, stress, relationships, smoking and other risky behaviors. So what this really tells us is that the majority of things that we that happen to Americans as they get older have to do with poor lifestyles. And we're gonna go uh, uh, next uh, to um, a video clip called Rewind the Future. I'm gonna, we'll show that and then I wanna talk about that for a minute. All right, what do we got? Just came in, heart attack. Five nine, three hundred pounds, thirty two years old. How the hell does that happen? <laughs> Can I get a? Uh... Could be developing diabetes. Yeah, to make change. Oh yeah. You're graduating. <laughs> Watch TV. You wouldn't have to leave. You can't do this. Yes, can I get a? I don't know how deep this. You have to make a change. Good job, Jim. You got an A plus. Here your fries, sweetie. I still can't believe you get this child such a nice thing. I know. But it's the only thing that'll make you stop. Tell me that that's not impactful. If you haven't seen that video before, I want you to go back after this is over and look at it again. And every time you think about your health and think about the clients and the patients that you're taking care of, if you're a healthcare provider, think about that video and go back and look at it. When you rewind the future, it's really interesting. When the doctor walks into the, uh, uh, into the emergency room and he asks the nurse, what do, we, what do we have? He says, what do we got? 
and she says, a 32-year-old guy, 300 pounds that had a heart attack, what does he say? He says, how the hell does that happen? And then obviously the video itself rewinds to the beginning where the family is really, they, they really are involved in just very unhealthy habits. So the kid starts out getting less healthy and less healthy. And as time goes on, he gets to the point where he's a young guy, 32 years old, and he has a heart attack because he's obese and he's probably diabetic, as the physician said. So we really need to look at, again, what lifestyle does and how it impacts our risks for disease and the risks for chronic illness and whether it puts us on a road towards health or, or uh, disease. Um, there's another slide that I want to put up on the screen here that is a, uh, the slide of a book by Maxwell Gladwell called The Tipping Point. The reason for putting this slide up is, is uh, you know, there's, there's several reasons, but, but basically, I think in life right now, especially with the coronavirus pandemic that hopefully we're getting over at this time and all the civil unrest, I think we're really at a tipping point where we have to decide and a lot of these videos really talk about making a change. It was mentioned, uh, the, the um, female physician says to the mother, you have to make a change. And I think we're at a tipping point in life where we all have to decide what we will do and what happens at this tipping point to either tip us in the direction towards better health or towards disease. So it's, it's really interesting that we're all involved in this CHIP program, the Complete Health Improvement Program. We're all involved in delivering health care. And I think what, when I talk about CHIP, I talk about it as a solution to the health care crisis that we're dealing with today. Because it's not just the food alone. It's the fact that we can teach people how to live a healthier life. And because of that, we create a tremendous solution and we help people live a healthier life. We decrease risk factors. We decrease the incidence of chronic disease, so on and so forth. So I want you to look at it from this perspective. You have a tool in chip at the tip of your fingers that is the solution to the healthcare crisis that we deal with today. And that is dramatic. And knowing that you have that tool in your toolbox and that you can help yourself, your family, your friends, your patients, anyone else is really amazing. Um, before we get on to the questions, we have one more video that helps us to put all the pieces together, if you will. Now, there's nothing more frustrating when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle than when you don't have all the pieces. Now, you never get that satisfaction of actually completing the picture, you know, of achieving the goal. You know, it's much the same when it comes to improving your health and well-being. You need all the pieces in their proper place in order to be successful. And that is what CHIP is all about. It's the Complete Health Improvement Program. And it's about giving you the right pieces in the right place so that you can be successful. It addresses things like physical activity, looks at substance use, includes stress and resilience. And then it even looks at things like self-worth and happiness. Because you know, what's the use really in being thin and healthy if you're absolutely miserable? You know, essentially what CHIP is about is giving you all the pieces and putting them in the right place that you need to flourish in life. And I really want to encourage you to give this your best shot. It will work for you if you do. You know, today, is the first day of the rest of your life. And I want to encourage you to live your best life. Choose to live your best life. Live more. So today is the first day of the rest of your life. I really like Dr. Morton's way of talking about putting all the pieces together. He talks about the food part. He talks about the physical activity part how stress and sleep are involved, how self-worth and happiness, and he's got a great program called the LIFT program that you have, that if you don't know about, we can get you more information about the LIFT program because it's a program that helps you to think about how important happiness is in your life and self-worth is. And in this age today, 
when we're dealing with so many different things, the coronavirus, civil unrest, and so on and so forth, and, and things in our personal life that really affect us, I think we really have to think about how do we improve our mental health, improve our happiness, decrease our risk for anxiety, depression, and so, and so on and so forth. So um, I wanna complete the monologue and just get into some of the questions. What is the most accurate test for diagnosing subclinical vascular disease before one is symptomatic? That is a phenomenal question. Thank you to whoever put that into the chat box. It's really interesting how so many people that have been to their physician or their healthcare provider and have had an evaluation, including a lipid profile, which is seen by some providers as the standard to identify whether or not you have risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And those people then go on to develop heart attacks and strokes. And if you look back, it's like, how, how is that so? You went for your physical exam, everything seemed to be fine. The doctor listened to your heart and lungs and things were okay, did a blood test and the lipid profile was normal. The reason why more than 50% of people with normal lipid profiles still go on to have a heart attack and stroke is because the lipid profile does not really address the question that this uh, individual asked. Subclinical vascular disease is the starting point for hardening of the arteries, for blocked arteries, for strokes and heart disease and kidney failure. And there are actually tests where you can do blood tests that will show you if you're developing inflammation on the inside of the arteries. So probably at one of the next sessions, I'll actually talk more about the specifics. There is a company that I've, I've been using for several years now that does the blood tests that tell you whether or not you're developing hardening of the arteries and subclinical, subclinical vascular disease. That's inflammation on the inside of the arteries. So the short answer to the question is, there are easy blood tests that you can do. Um, I'll talk about that more at one of the upcoming sessions. And if the person that put that in uh, to the chat box wants to email me, I'd be glad to give you some specific information before we actually talk about that more on the air. Um, if lifestyle medicine takes off, what will be the future of regular medicine physicians? <laughs> well, even if we did the best possible job at prevention, Bad things still happen to good people. Bad things, unfortunately, still happen when we do the right things. You could, unfortunately, do a lot of the right things with your lifestyle and still, unfortunately, end up with cancer or a particular disease. So I think the answer is nothing really will, nothing bad certainly will happen to the, uh, the physicians that do standard family practice internal medicine because there are so many people that we have to take care of so many people with health problems and even people that don't have health problems right now that we need to be concerned about that I think nothing bad will happen with traditional physicians and traditional healthcare providers. But I think what will happen is the physicians that do lifestyle medicine will bubble up to the top for a lot of people that are really interested in staying well and staying off medication in getting involved with the CHIP program and figuring out how do I actually bring plant-based nutrition into my home and into my kitchen. So I think it really will identify the physicians and the other healthcare providers that do lifestyle medicine as a subspecialty. And just as an aside, I was going to leave this for the end. If you're interested in finding a plant-based doctor, there's a website, plantbaseddocs.com, uh, that's actually been newly revised. And you can go on that website and find a physician or a healthcare provider in your area that focuses on lifestyle medicine. So great question. Um, can you talk more about the benefits of Jumpstart? So CHIP is a, an extensive program. We all know that it's a nine week program, twice a week for nine weeks, 18 or 19 sessions. There are shorter programs like the Jumpstart program that gives you very similar benefits and I think the benefits of the Jumpstart Nutrition Program is the fact that number one, it gives you the tools, it gives you the actionable education and knowledge to put plant-based lifestyle into your own kitchen and into your own lifestyle. 
and gives you the knowledge when you go to a restaurant on what to eat and what not to eat. It's a shorter program, so it's a little bit easier to get involved in, but what I think one of the tremendous benefits is the fact that it shows you very quickly how quickly lifestyle behaviors and plant-based nutrition really brings about clinical improvements. Blood pressure goes down right away, cholesterol goes down right away. Sometimes you have to actually adjust your medication when those, uh, when those benefits come about. So lots of benefits with the, with the Jumpstart program. Can you explain more about the LIFT program that you mentioned? Yes, the Darren Morton um, has been the, the driver of this LIFT program and it basically is a program that helps you to focus on happiness. Uh, we could do a whole session on that but the emphasis is on happiness, relationships, um, how all of the things that we do on a daily basis impact our mental health. At this time in life, certainly mental health is very much a concern. So I will be sure to bring back more information about the LIFT program. If the person that put this into the chat box wants to uh, email me, th that would be great. I'll, I'll actually get you uh, the reference for the book. Uh, my email address is drsal, Dr. Sal, lifestyle med, L I F E S T Y L E med, M E D, at gmail.com. You can send, it, send me an email directly uh, or to uh, our chip address, all of which is located at the, uh, at the end. And we can really get you as much information as you need to help yourself, your family, your friends, and your patients to stay healthier. Do insurance companies pay for the chip program? or using a health savings account, can you, do, can you use that? We're actually working on that. Dr. Uh, John Gobble has worked with local insurance companies. He's, he's out in Portland uh, to get the insurance companies to pay for the CHIP program. We're working on that locally. But even if we're not successful in the short term with getting the program paid for by insurance companies, I want you to think about this one thing. What is more important to spend your money on than your health? Because of all the priorities that you have in your life, if your health goes down the tubes, if you get sick, if God forbid you get a chronic disease or a cancer, you will be spending as much money as you have on regaining your health or attempting to regain your health. You will be spending a lot of time and effort and mental you know, energy to try and regain your health. So we will continue to work on getting these nutrition programs paid for by insurance companies, but I really want to reemphasize, there's nothing more important than your health. If you lose your health, you lose so many other things in life. So really focus on that as best you can. Um, and we'll keep working on, on getting things paid for that we know we really need to have, uh, have involved in our lives. Does CHIP do any outreach to underserved populations or do you have any recommendations for promoting CHIP to such populations? Absolutely. In this town, we have a fabulous champion. I'll mention her name, Kathy Rayner. Kathy is a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, a peer. Um, she is out in the community as are so many of the other facilitators that we work with spreading the gospel, if you will, spreading the word that the CHIP program and lifestyle behaviors are so important to people. So we definitely do reach out to people in underserved communities because obviously there are a lot, a lot of people in those areas that don't have access to healthy food, uh, find that it's too expensive to eat healthy food that's purchased in the grocery stores. So part of the CHIP program is really to also educate people on where they can find healthy food that's affordable and how to cook and enjoy those uh, foods in their own homes so that they can be healthier. Fabulous question. Thank you so much for that. What is the best registry to identify a local lifestyle medicine practitioner? Well, um, we're again focusing on getting more of that information out to the public because this question comes up all the time. PlantBasedDocs.com is a is a website that you can go to to not only find a local lifestyle medicine plant-based provider but also to get a lot of information about the
the topics of plant-based nutrition and healthy lifestyle and healthy behaviors. And at each session, I'll certainly pass more and more of that information on along. We're getting down to uh, the, uh, the end of the program. Um, I just want to remind you, as Dr. Morton said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Health really is the number one priority that you should set every day. And if you can achieve that, then all of your other priorities are supported, if you will. If you will. Um, when you really don't focus on healthy behaviors and you're, you're going down that road towards risk factors and chronic illnesses and such, your life changes so dramatically. So through the CHIP program, the Complete Health Improvement Program, through what we learn in this program, we can dramatically help ourselves. And if we can do that, we can spread that information on to many other people. And we can really change the lives of the people around us, but also we change the world by doing that. And I think it's imperative for healthcare providers to realize how much of an effect we all have on changing the world around us. So I wanna wish everyone good health, God bless everyone. I will uh, see you all in a week from now, same place, same channel. Um, have a great afternoon. Thank you so much.